Hey bag ladies and bag dudes, I'm Sarah Lawson from So Sweetness and today I'm going to show you how to make the faith wall storage bins. These bins are available in three different sizes and they're super fast to put together. So grab your supplies and let's get started. Okay, before we begin, you'll need to print out the PDF pattern file and you always want to open the pattern using Adobe Reader. It's a free program that you can download to your computer or device if you don't already have it. And the last four pages of the PDF file contain the template. So you'll want to print those out. And if you'll notice on page two of the templates, there's a one inch square and a four centimeter square. And you'll want to measure either of those squares to make sure that they measure either exactly one inch or exactly four centimeters. So I'm gonna take my quilting ruler and measure that one inch square just to double check so it shouldn't measure slightly smaller or slightly larger. It needs to be exactly either one inch or four centimeters. So let me show you how to tape these together. We're gonna to start off by taping pages one and two together. On page two, I'm just going to trim along the left-hand margin. And if you'll notice, there's black triangles along the sides and the bottom of the template pages. You'll want to make sure to align those triangles and also to align the artwork and the outer rectangle. So I'm going to go ahead and tape those together. Okay, next we'll be adding pages three and four of the template. So on page three, I'm just going to go ahead and trim off the top edge of the margin. And then I'll just go ahead and tape that together again, lining up the triangles. Okay, and then on page four, I'm going to trim the top edge and also the left-hand side. And then we'll be taping this to page three. Okay, after taping your pages together, you'll go ahead and cut out your pattern pieces to the outside of the thick black line. And for the handle template, which is this page here, you won't be using that to cut out from fabric, but just go ahead and put it to the side till later on. We'll be using it to mark some stitching line for the handle opening on the pieces. So again, you'll be cutting out to the outside of the thick black line. Okay, so now go ahead and cut out all of your fabric and interfacing pieces, and let me show you how to attach the fabric to interfacing. So we'll start off with the lining bottom and the Pellen Shape Flex interfacing. So the side of the interfacing that feels bumpy to your fingertips is the side with the adhesive that will go against the wrong side of your fabric. So I'm gonna flip my fabric so that it's face down. And I have my iron set at the cotton setting. And I'm just going to glide it over each section of the fabric until the interfacing is adhered. And you'll likely wanna use a pressing cloth. I usually don't for my videos just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. And you can use a bit of steam if you wish also. So once you've ironed that in place, you want to just take your fingernail to try to peel back a corner of the fabric from the interfacing. If you can peel it away easily, that just means you need to iron a little bit longer. And if you can't peel it away, then that means you're good to go and you can repeat that same process for all of the pieces that need to be attached to the pollen shape flex. If you're using um, a fusible foam interfacing, you'll attach your foam to the respective pieces in a similar manner as what we just did with the shape flex. I like using a sew-in foam. I'm using by Annie Soft and Stable. So I'm just gonna lay my fabric on top of the foam and just give it a pass with my iron to smooth it out. And then I'm just gonna use some Wonder Clips to hold the outer edges of the fabric to the foam. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and machine base the outer edges using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I usually like to lengthen my stitch length for this process, so I'm going to lengthen my stitch length to four millimeters.
Okay, and you'll repeat this process with the other piece that requires the foam interfacing. And when you've finished basting your fabric to the foam, make sure you change back to your regular stitch length. And mine is two and a half millimeters. Okay, now go ahead and take out your lining main panel. And I'm gonna flip so that the wrong side of the fabric is face up. And if your fabric is directional, you'll just wanna make sure that it's oriented correctly. On the top edge, I'm going to draw a line that's a quarter of an inch down from the top edge and I'm going to draw that line straight across. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and press toward the wrong side at that line. Okay, and we're going to be, do this, be doing the same thing for the exterior piece. So here's my exterior. Again, I'm going to flip so that it's fabric side face down. And I'm also going to draw that line that's a quarter of an inch down from the top edge. Okay, I'm also going to press toward the wrong side of that line. However, I found it helpful since the foam interfacing makes things a little bit thicker. I found it helpful to press first and then use Wonder Clips to hold the fabric toward the wrong side. And you can just leave the Wonder Clips on your fabric until the project is almost completed. And having the Wonder Clips on there for, um, I think it takes me around an hour to finish this project. Having the Wonder Clips on there for almost an hour really helps because it helps sort of establish a new uh, memory for that foam interfacing and helps keep it turned toward the wrong side. So go ahead and just leave your wonder clips on there for most of the project. Okay, so now here's where the handle template comes in handy. Okay, so I'm going to actually cut out the inner oval from the paper handle template and go ahead and pull out your lining piece again. And the lining piece was the piece with the pellet shape flex on it. So I went ahead and folded my paper in half and just make a crease with the paper. And if you feel more comfortable, you can also draw a, line, a little line up here where the crease is. And I'm also going to fold this piece in half as well. And I'm going to draw a line at the top and bottom, and that's basically the center of this particular piece. And we're gonna use the template to mark on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm going to align the center of the paper with that center marking and just go ahead and flatten out that top crease for now. And then go ahead and draw that center oval on the wrong side of your fabric. Okay, now go ahead and pull your exterior piece back out. We're gonna be placing these two pieces so that they're right sides together. And you wanna align the sides and the bottom. And I just found it helpful just to put a couple of wonder clips along the top edge just to hold it in place. Okay, so I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and we're going to be sewing directly on top of the line through all layers of fabric. Okay, and as you approach the corner curved edge, I found it really helpful to decrease my stitch length just to get a nicer stitching line through the curve. So my regular stitch length is two and a half millimeters. I'm going to increase actually to one and a half millimeters just for this curved portion. Um, again, I find it really helpful to get a prettier curve sewn over here. And you can still pivot if you need to, but having those tighter stitches just makes the curve look a lot more smooth.
Okay, and then when you come out of the curve, you can change back to your regular stitch length. And then again, I'm going to turn it back down when I reach the opposite end. Okay, now I'm going to trim the seam allowance along the inner portion of the oval to approximately a quarter of an inch. So to get that started, I'm just going to make a snip through all layers of fabric. And then you don't necessarily need to measure that quarter of an inch. I'm just going to eyeball it. Okay, so I'm going to leave little notches along those side curves and then make snips along the top and the bottom. So notches are cutting little V's within the seam allowance. And I'm going to cut those really close together along the side edge just because it's really easy for that fabric to get bunched up. And then the same thing on the other side corner. And then just make the little snips the rest of the way. And then same thing for the top edge as well. Okay, so I'm going to remove the wonder clips holding the layers together. Go ahead and just leave the other wonder clips on your exterior. And then I'm just going to go ahead and push that lining fabric through the opening. Okay, so you can press this opening. I found I had an easier time if I just used my fingers to roll the seam and then put some wonder clips on there. Okay, and you especially want to do a good job with those side corners, making sure your fingers smooth the area before you put some wonder clips on there. Okay, so we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna top stitch this oval using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. I'm gonna lengthen my stitch length to three millimeters and as I come to those side edges of the oval, I'm going to decrease my stitch length just as I did when I was sewing directly on top of the line. And honestly, just do the best you can with the top stitching. It doesn't have to look like a million bucks. Just do the best you can and sew slowly through the curve if you find that that helps you. And then I'm going to decrease my stitch length to help with those side edges. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn back to three millimeters and then I'm gonna decrease my stitch length one more time. Okay, so now I'm going to bring the two exterior pieces, the short ends, so that they're right sides together. And if you have some wonder clips in the way, just remove the wonder clips. Push that lining out of the way. And we're going to temporarily flatten just those two side edges. 
Okay, so we're gonna be sewing this short side edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Okay, and make sure you change back to your regular stitch length and on my machine that's two and a half millimeters. Okay, go ahead and press that seam open. Okay, and then we're gonna repeat that same process for the lining pieces. So go ahead and place those short ends so that they're right sides together and temporarily flatten out that top pressed edge. So we're gonna start and end using a quarter of an inch seam allowance. However, we're sort of going to veer in toward a half inch on the center and that'll help make a tighter fit when the lining is inside the exterior. So again, we're going to start at a quarter of an inch, veer in toward a half an inch, and then back down toward a quarter of an inch when you reach the bottom edge. Okay, so now we're gonna make some quarter markings. So the side edge with the seam is a quarter marking. Go ahead and flatten that piece out with the seam on one side, and then go ahead and mark the opposite end, top and bottom. Okay, so now go ahead and move the piece so that the seam is directly on top of that quarter marking that you just made, and if you're more comfortable you can put a wonder clip on there for just a second. Okay, so go ahead and flatten that out. And we're also gonna to mark top and bottom on either side. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing for the lining. And I'll remove that wonder clip. So again, you're gonna fold the lining so that the seam's on one side. And then mark the top and the bottom. and then go ahead and bring that seam on top of the quarter markings that you made. Okay, we're also gonna mark the bottom piece, the exterior and the lining. So here's my exterior bottom. I'm gonna flip so that the wrong side of the fabric is face up and if you'll notice, there's quarter markings on your pattern piece, which you can use to mark on the wrong side of the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark top and bottom, and then I'm actually gonna orient this quarter marking over here so that I can mark the sides. Okay, and you'll do the same thing for your lining piece. As you can see, I've got four quarter markings over there. Okay, so we're gonna start by pinning the lining bottom to the bottom edge of your lining fabric. So the top edge is the edge that's pressed toward the wrong side. The bottom edge is what we're gonna be focusing on right here. Okay, so I'm gonna first start off by pinning that seam to one of the quarter markings. And then I'm going to pin all four of the quarter markings and then pin all the way around the, west, the rest of the way around. Okay, so just go ahead and fill in some more wonder clips to hold all of the fabrics right sides together. Okay, so after you've finished pinning, we're gonna take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna be sewing this pinned edge using a half inch seam allowance. The lining is going to have a larger seam allowance than the exterior so that fits more neatly inside when the project is all finished. And I'm actually gonna be sewing with this circle face up on my sewing machine. Okay, so again, this is gonna be a half inch seam allowance. And as I sew, I'm just gonna use my fingers to make sure I have a smooth, flat edge that I'm sewing over and not a bunched up fabric or some puckers.
Okay, so I'm gonna trim that seam down in half, so to approximately a quarter of an inch. And no need to measure it, you can just eyeball it, that's fine. Okay, so now we're going to add the exterior piece and again we're going to be sewing it to the bottom edge and the bottom edge is not the edge where we press it toward the wrong side. And again we're going to pin it the same way that, that we did with the lining, so go ahead and match up your quarter markings first. And then after you've pinned your four quarter markings, go ahead and pin the rest of the way around. Okay, so we're going to take this back over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew the pinned edge using a quarter of an inch seam allowance this time. Okay, now go ahead and flip your exterior fabric so that it's right side facing out. And for this project, I just actually like to do a little visual check on this bottom seam just to make sure I've caught all of my fabric edges. So you just wanna quickly check that first just to make sure you're all good to go. And then go ahead and place the lining inside the exterior. So just an option that I wanted to give you in case you want a really tight finish inside your storage bin you can use a spray adhesive and you want to make sure that you find one that's specifically meant for ha for fabric. So I happen to have this one on hand and it is uh, a spray adhesive for fabric. Spray and Bond also makes an adhesive for fabric as well and I've used that one in the past and that one's fine. And if you do decide to use the spray adhesive, you'll just go ahead and spray it on your foam and then fit it as snugly as you can against your exterior before you're doing your top stitching. So I'm not going to use the spray adhesive on mine, I'm just going to go ahead and finish it to top stitching. So we're going to line up all the quarter markings first starting with the seams. So again we pressed this lining edge toward the wrong side by a quarter of an inch at the beginning. And same thing with the exterior, so go ahead and pin those fabrics together first and then I'm going to find the rest of the quarter markings and then pin my way around the, the rest of the project. So finding the quarter markings first is really helpful because it helps you evenly distribute the fabric so that you don't start pinning and then have an excess amount of fabric at the end when you finish pinning. Okay so then I'm going to pin the rest of the way all the way around and you want to make sure that you have everything pinned so that no raw edges are showing. And feel free to use a ton of wonder clips. It's always better to have more than not enough so that you don't accidentally sew over some puckers while you're trying to top stitch your fabric. Okay, so we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and top stitch this 
upper pinned edge using an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And I'm actually going to lengthen my stitch length for this top stitching, so I'm gonna lengthen to three millimeters. Okay, I, I also wanted to mention that if you're using a different colored fabric from your exterior to your lining, you may consider matching your bobbin thread so that it matches your lining fabric and it blends in. My fabrics are pretty close in color, so I'm using the same color thread for both, but I just wanted to let you know that that's an option if you need to use it. Okay, now go ahead and give your storage bin a good press. So to do that, I'm just gonna lay it on its side and then go over the lining with my iron. And I also found it really helpful to actually, you can either iron the bottom by pinching the seam and then going over it with your iron. I actually found it really helpful, instead of doing that, to go ahead and put some wonder clips around the bottom and just let the wonder clip sit for an hour or two and then when you have, uh, when you take the wonder clips off, then it makes a really nice crisp finish along the bottom of your storage bin. So either way, you can either iron or place some wonder clips, just leave them on for a couple of hours, and then your storage bin is finished. Thanks so much for sewing along with me. I can't wait to see your finished storage bin. Be sure to post a photo of your finished project in my Facebook group. And remember, if I can do it, so can you.